Розповімо про програму допомоги створену при школі Святого Димитрія для людей психічно постраждалих війною в Україні. Our little school Saint Demetrius has taken on more than 260 newcomers, students, um, and that includes their families as well. And the amount of work that the teachers have done in order to create a safe space for them to help them acclimate to the school and to school life as a whole and to Canada has been incredible. Uh, they have done more than we could possibly ask of them and have given of themselves. And I've recognized that since September up until this point, our teachers have changed, um, not for the worse, but not for the better either. They are experiencing various levels of trauma similar to the children as they are living through vicarious trauma, as was noted today in our sessions. And our boards and our government uh, have failed the, uh, the teachers and the students that have come here by not creating a fulsome program that was implemented for mental health. And it was something that was desperately needed and I saw an opening and thought, you know what, this is something that privately we can do in order to help these teachers and these students as they try to continue to acclimate to life here in Canada. So today's sessions were very important, very much needed for our staff. Our staff has been working tirelessly for the last year and uh, just giving and giving and giving of themselves and today was a chance where everybody could sort of break down and, and tell one another what they're going through and what they've been feeling. They've been there for the children, they've heard the stories, they've lived it, and now they can finally say, okay, now I need to look after myself. It's, it's a very heavy, uh, heavy material that, that they're being you know, dealt to deal with on a daily basis on top of educating. And um, the staff is, is incredible and they, they need this. They need this for their own mental state. They need this to be strong and to keep going so that they can be there for the children. We had several different agencies that I had reached out to in order to make this happen. After speaking to six different agencies, I determined that two of them made the best sense for us. And the first one is PLCAS. They came in, they gave us um, insight into trauma and crisis and what to look for and gave us resources on what was and was not available to not only the school, but to the greater community that is in need. The other organization, and I think that this one is, is and was key to this event, um, was Native Child. When there's a political forced effort to eradicate whole groups of people, and children are experiencing this, what is the messaging? They're not valuable, they're not worthy, and it's unsafe, and we can do what we want. These are the messages you're your little ones are caring. Some of the questions that I have uh, I've gotten is, is um, really to navigate multiple systems. But taking a bus to go to an appointment, they don't mind how to navigate that. One, because of the language barrier, and two, because it's a new community. Like if I have a, a child or a youth coming in and they're identifying right away that they're feeling really angry today, and something happened at school, and you know, mom or dad or caregiver didn't understand, and they're feeling, I can see it in them, right? They're, they're holding anger in their body. I may scrap my plan for the, how this session was gonna go, and let's jump into, okay, let's move our body. What are we gonna do to get this anger out in a healthy way? Let's release it. I can't thank Kathy and Catherine enough for the work that they did, um, the support that they provided, providing holistic tools. Many people know that the relationship between Indigenous people and Ukrainians started well over 135 years ago. And it just seems that the two cultures are, are very much tied together in their plights. And today we talked about Russian genocide and how that was something that the Indigenous people of Canada continue to struggle with. And they have tools and resources at the ready because they have been helping to heal generational traumas. And that is something that I thought was very key to the healing of not only our teachers, but for the students that are newcomers here and the students that are here helping to support those newcomers as well. And it was that holistic treatments and therapies that I think resonated the most with these teachers. And I think those will be the tools that they carry forward, not only for themselves, but also for the students as they move forward.
So I have some activities that I'll go into now that can be done with the whole classroom. So you don't have to isolate the children who have come here and are, are the newcomers. We don't have to do that. We can do these activities with, with the entire classroom together in, in a positive way so we don't have to separate uh, different people. I really liked the last part where we had the speakers talk about the medicine circle and uh, bringing in a lot of activities to help get the students anger out with movement so using art and different uh, activities like dance things like that. I, um, I had a child in my class who um, had a lot of issues when she first came from Ukraine and we found that dance really helped calm her down and she uh, became more part of our class and was more comfortable. When we're working with children, they don't have the words and the language to communicate those feelings and get them out. Sitting and talking with a friend over coffee is what's going to help me feel better about my day. But for them, it's going to be movement or, or drawing or coloring or play. So we really have to get creative when it comes to like dynamic ways to help them and support them in their, in their journey and their healing.